it is it is an incredible tragedy because you know before Gaza, I was out there saying, mm-hmm. listen, it's not just the lesser two evils vote. If you look just at antitrust and you right. look just at labor, and like, just at wages, like wages now are growing faster than prices, and they have been like if you for ca- several if you years, care about and, cor- and, and especially the lower end. If you care about checking corporate power, yeah. the people he put in place in key you know positions have done a great job, and they've been aggressive, and it's been groundbreaking, and it's been a real break from the Clinton Obama. Democratic Party, and obviously wildly better than, you know, Trump had a bunch of union busters in at the NLRB, and the antitrust was not doing anything different than what was being done before. So those pieces are undoubtedly better under Biden. You know, I don't think that they've done a great job selling it or whatever. It's long term. While you have a lot of of, um, pain for people that is very present and very real right now. And on the economic front, you know, I've long said that dropping the, the economic pieces of Build Back Better and allow all the COVID social safety net stuff to expire. I mean, that was a huge moral disaster. It was a huge political disaster. And it's a big and I think undersold part of why his economic approval ratings are so incredible, incredibly low. I just want to. One of the things that I also want to tackle is a lot of times people will say, well, we just have to get the messaging right. What What is wrong with that? When they say, oh, we just have to get the messaging correct. Um, your white supremacy is showing because there's people dying in Gaza. Like, I don't care. Biden can give me health care for all right now. I don't care. End the genocide. That is the biggest thing going on right now in the world. Oh, boy, because there's some things. So I'm going to share this really quick because this was in a tweet that people clipped. And some people may say, well, you didn't get it in context. So to be fair, we're going to share this clip first, and then we're going to go to the full video to get the full context. So I'm going to share my screen really quick. And this is with Crystal Ball and Ryan Graham. So I want you guys, I'm not even going to read the tweet. I want you guys to gauge what was said and what it means here. It is an incredible tragedy because, you know, before Gaza, I was out there saying, Mm -hmm. listen, it's not just a lesser two evils vote. If you look just at antitrust and you look just at labor. And just at wages, like wages now are growing faster than prices and they have been like if you, ca- if you care and, about cor- and, and especially at the lower end if you care about checking corporate power yeah. the people he put in place in key you know positions have done a great job and they've been aggressive and it's been groundbreaking and it's been a real break from the clinton obama democratic party and obviously wildly better than you know trump had a bunch of union busters in at the end it is an incredible tragedy because you so let me share what the tweet said. The tweet said, Crystal Ball and Ryan Graham are pivoting back to Joe Biden. They both stated that Americans have extra cash in their pockets and Joe Biden's economy is great. If it wasn't for Gaza, they would be defending Biden. So uh, thank you to Devin Denton for this. I'm going to, it, it, it sounds bad, from just that clip. Would you agree, Valerie? Yes, very. Okay. From the actual clip from Breaking Points, it's it's actually kind of worse. Oh yeah, this is the first time I've ever heard of him, so. Yeah, it's actually kind of worse. Um. So let me share this really quick because it's, you know, like Donald Trump would say, it's uh, not good. It's not good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Oh, man. So let me come here. So let me make sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm at the right spot. 
Just want to make sure I'm in the right spot. All right, we'll go just a little bit before. All right, let me share the screen. All right, so this is Breaking Points reacts Biden's campaign State of the Union. So they're reacting to the State of the Union address, okay? Those of you who were with me on Thursday evening with KD and Sabiha, you guys saw our reaction. And now here is what their thoughts are post State of the Union address. Let's get the full context. Status quo of today, where the base is able to kill a border bill. The problem, and I mean, there's a myriad reasons why, it's maybe what this is, I actually want to know what you guys think. For some reason, we haven't seen the ability for the left to exercise that same level of political power until, look, maybe today is the breaking point, right? Because we have uncommitted, that actually is a genuine political force. And I mean, I think that the calculus, and this is where I probably defend the two of you and have stock up for you also for my, when my centrist Biden friends get very upset <laughs> at the things that you say is, wow, you, you got just say but Marshall. Trump would, uh, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just Marshall. Uh, is there like, yeah, but, but, but Trump would be so much worse. I'm like, yeah, but they're trying to extract a pound of flesh to show that they can. And it's like that just hasn't really happened a lot with the political left in this there, country. There and is that's a the issue. knee jerk assumption that really started with Bill Clinton. Yeah, right. That the way to win is to kick the left in posture like you're, you know, to adopt a lot of the Republican mm -hmm. position, like on welfare and yeah. on NASA and all kinds of and other Biden things. Biden is cuts. the symbol. He's and the poster candidate. That is his ideological very, very bearing. True. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, I keep uh, Mark Lamont Hill said this uh, with regards to Israel and how they were have been so clueless about what a problem this is for them electorally, which has been obvious from the very beginning. But if you've been in Washington 50 years in that 50 years, it has never been a political problem to be too pro Israel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. him and the, you know, his little bubble of yep. people who have similar like 50 year careers in Washington, DC and all of these things baked in, they're just not able to adjust to any other assumption. They're not able to realize that there are certain areas where actually the left wing position is incredibly popular. Valerie, just a question to you in regards to what Crystal said there. Is it just because somebody like joe biden was an establishment politician is it just because oh he's an establishment democrat so that's why the left gets stepped on day in and day out or is it is it deeper than that oh it's very deep um the left wing opposition has been crushed since the 1920s um, mm -hmm. I would even say even before the 1920s, there was the two major red scares and we're in the third one right now. Um, mm -hmm. it, this It's always been the status quo to step on the left. And what they'll do is they'll gaslight you into voting for them this round saying, oh, don't worry, we'll get you that $15 minimum wage. And then when they mm -hmm. vote, when you actually vote them in, they only give it to federal employees. Most of us aren't federal employees last time I checked. Um, it's, it's insane. And um going back to the the 2020 elections when they said we could push biden uh biden left where has that even happened here like he was union busting for the longest time she was even talking about it in that video that he is better on unions than trump it's like didn't we have a whole year where biden was busting those unions and stopped the railroad workers like what are you talking about it's impossible to move biden left due to the lack of commitment within principles of like leftism all right like you cannot move a neoliberal or a liberal left they are capitalists left in itself is a progression from the status quo and the status quo is imperialism colonialism and capitalism how can we move as established democrat left i will never i will never i don't think we'll get this answered ever in my life vosh might want to answer that he thinks to have, have all the answers to that but uh i don't think we can answer that i don't think that'll ever be answered actually i'll answer right now you can't you can't move him left. Yeah, that that's impossible. Like Biden couldn't move to the left if he was doing the cha-cha slide. <laughs> he couldn't. He could. He could stumble to the left, but then he stumbled like to the right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. All right. 
Let's continue. And you would benefit from yeah. adopting that position. Now, I do want to give uh, some credit to the economic portion of this speech, which I thought was well crafted. I was it? Wait, uh, hang on, <laughs> Valerie. Uh, hold up. Do you think that Joe Biden's speech was well crafted for the State of the Union address? I'm not sure if you actually caught it though. It was I a did. dumpster I, fire. Actually, yeah, I watched it all. Um, I would say it was well crafted for theater of bourgeois politics, but when you're looking at it to facts and fiction, uh, it was all fiction. Uh, I have now that I actually have a finally like a union job, I can actually live comfortably. And that's taking years, years of trying to find something, having jobs just lay me off this, that and whatever. And I'm extremely lucky to be in the position I'm at because I see everybody else around me, even with high degrees and union jobs, not doing so well. So I don't know where this great economy is that Biden was talking about where it was I guess he gave a great speech. I, when I was there, I, I didn't see it, to be honest. Mm. I, when yeah. I heard it, I was like, ooh, this is a good lie. Oh, he's, he's keeping it going. Uh, another lie. Uh, get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's sticking him. He's sticking him. Lie number one. Lie number two. Lie number three. There we go. Oh, my God. That's the show we know. <laughs> All right. And I, I latest latest comment actually the establishment that might be moving right or left, but a lot of a lot of the people are yes and um, okay so we we keep demanding for a ceasefire here in the United States while we're our country is the one that's funding Israel. Um, I don't think the Soviets or the Allies in World War II called for a ceasefire to end you know the genocide going on within uh, German occupied spaces. They went in and actually stopped it. I'm not saying, you know, go to war with the government, but what I'm saying is at some point, just protesting saying ceasefire isn't going to do what we think it is. We have to, like what, like what some of the people are doing at the border from aid getting into Gaza, they're standing in front of it. Maybe we need to stand in front of the military aid that's going to Israel. Y'all see why I brought Valerie on. <laughs> you see why I brought Valerie on. I haven't done one of these close-ups in a while. So you, know, you know I had to do it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Take a screenshot. You know it's good. All right. So let's get it back into... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Katie's... Katie was with me. On, on Thursday night when we were covering the State of the Union, Katie says that old man pulled 15 million jobs off of his ass. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, 15 million? Like, I was 15 like, million. where the hell did he get 15 million, million from? I, I I haven't seen these. I was like, to be honest, I actually lost the job we recently. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's let's continue, because Miss Miss Ball, really, I thought it emphasized. I thought it was good. I mean, it was very like made in America. It was very sort of like economic nationalist in a way that I think lands in a real populist way. Yeah. Um, he spent a lot of time talking about specific proposals to help make housing more affordable, both for homeowners, aspiring homeowners, and. Enter. He talked about using antitrust to go after um, these big landlord companies that are basically rigging the markets and use it. He didn't get into the whole algorithm situation, right. but we actually we talked about it on the show yeah, this yeah. week. My rent's gone up two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that antitrust law stuff's even coming in. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? She's doing what Biden did too during that. She's just pulling stuff. She's just pulling it. Because <laughs> I have never... Everybody's rent that I know has gone up. Look, I literally had to on, on Revolutionary Blood Network, I literally had to raise $5,000 to get help because they raised our rent $250 for one year. I am disabled and my mother is elderly. 
And this happened while Biden was in office. So, and this happened 2021, I think it was. No, no, 2022. This happened in 2022. So when people go, oh, but he's going to be doing antitrust laws. He's going to push antitrust laws. Do you really expect Joe Biden to push antitrust laws on Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, Blackstone? Do you really expect him to do that? Valerie, please. Sense into this. Expecting Biden to do anything of holding uh, oppressive people accountable. I mean, he's allowing a genocide to happen. So I think that's your answer. Because mm. it's easy to say, stop. Oh, I'm sorry. What? I say it's easy to stop. All America has to do, because we keep demanding a ceasefire as our government, all you have to do is stop funding Israel. You want him to stop. Stop funding them. They'll stop. <laughs> when they know the money machine's done, they'll stop because they can't keep it going. Like the kids say, facts. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let, let's continue. Yeah. Like, um, using the antitrust division to try to crack down on police fixing in the rental market, which is increasingly a huge issue. Yeah, you know, I thought there were some genuinely good things there. It's hard for me, though, you know, it's just hard for me to really give him credit on any of this when Gaza and what's happening there just yeah. looms so large over all of what it. What do you think, Ryan, about, look, what, I, about I just, this pound of the ability for the left to exercise power? Well, fundamentally, one yeah. problem, the, the, the heart is so much bigger in the United States than the heart. Why is the, that, the, Mr. Graham? That's my question. Why is it that the left is so much smaller than the hard right because look you have hard lefties right here right now and let, let me he said something that's under my let me go back just a couple seconds um i'll go back just a few seconds though you know it's just hard for me to really give him credit on any of this when gaza and what's happening there just yeah. looms so large over all of it what do you think ryan about, look, what, I, about I, this I, pound of flesh like the ability for left to exercise power. well i think uh, fundamentally one yeah. problem is that the the hard right is so much bigger in the united states than the hard left mm. like the or whatever you want to call them like just the the structural and the material conditions that exist here in the united states are do not like uh, do not set up a situation where you're gonna have a big left mm -hmm. like you had one mm. in the new deal because you just came out of a, a great depression and the u.s was not yet a, the global empire like riding a stride across the whole planet like and the, the the success of the left out of the 30s and and 40s was was their own undoing mm -hmm. and so what about the 60s the and 70s success of the left was our own undoing um I'm sorry. I don't I think like the black. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off right there. I didn't think the Black Panthers no. were existing in the 30s. I thought the FBI killed them, and I would say during the Cold War. Does McCarthyism ring a bell to somebody like Mr. Graham? Because if I'm if if I'm if my history lessons serve me correctly is that the left continued to grow, but then they demonized anybody that was further left than somebody like FDR. They basically punished and jailed and persecuted the left out of existence for daring to challenge capital. So was it the left's own fault or was it that the right used the levers of power and control by the state to suppress us?
And they wonder why they have such a hard right issue. Because they're the left wing people that they suppress aren't around to stop it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh boy. That that rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, mm. it sounds revisionist to me. It just really does. It, it's so, it's straight up historical revisionism. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, and Ryan Graham is the Washington bureau chief of the intercept. And a journalist. They, they just don't have the numbers. Like, it's it's you know you can do some tactical things here or there, but you're you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck. Oh, we'll see. But yeah, yeah, despite that, you did the the great tragedy of this genocide. Well, not the great tragedy. Like it's many layers down. But one of the tragedies of the genocide that Biden is overseeing is that is is that it has just stained his entire legacy of economic populism, which as Kyle was saying, like before, you know, before the speech, mm -hmm. he, he would be defending, I would be defending, you know, there, there's so much that you can say about it. The, the, the fact that prices jumped and are still high and rent is still a huge problem is itself kind of a cloud over everything else yeah. that he's done, yeah. but everything else he's done is not nothing like mm -hmm. low on low, low unemployment rate, you know, lab, labor militancy, uh, you know, cash in people's pockets, like the, the, the economy overall in the last like three years, a result of the, you know, the, the kinds of things that the left has been pushing for years. Is this economy what we have been pushing for, Valerie? Um, they didn't even get the infrastructure bill over here in Iowa. So I don't know what economy, I, I think that was supposed to come after they built the roads here, but no, we still got the worst bridges in the state. Um, no, no, I haven't seen the economy that these people are like, I, <laughs> okay. So the closest thing that exists right now that I would see is was a prospering uh, economy would probably have been what China was doing. I haven't seen that here. I haven't seen no rails. I haven't seen making anything affordable like houses, cars, food, food. I, we, I stole half of it, but I still spent $240 at the grocery store the other day. And I had, and I had to skip scan in a bunch of them. I'm not going to say where beds you looking, go home, but yeah. It's insane. I don't. I don't see this economy that they're talking about. Even we have record uh, uh, sign or, or record times of people not even paying their car payments. Like those are behind as a nation, like nationwide, those are behind. It's insane. So I don't know where this economy is. I mean, I bet you the economy is good if you have like a hundred thousand dollars at least. And even then, look, I'll put it this way. Crystal Ball and Ryan Graham are affluent. I'm not. I know sure as hell as I'm not. Valerie, are you? Hold on, let me check real quick. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no cash. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 your, your pockets are just as empty as mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't got any I cash. Draw, yeah, I ain't standing up because I don't want you all to see my drawers. But... <laughs> but my thing is, this is a family show. Um, but the, the issue is, I think there is a major disconnect because you will have, and, and, and this is not to attack somebody like a crystal ball or a Ryan Grimm, right? But this is to say that there is a huge disconnect when you're saying, the same talking points that someone like a David Pakman, because I had on Eddie Liger Smith from Midwestern Marks on uh, a few a couple months ago, and we were talking about um, we were talking about what David Pakman said in response to a Trump supporter, and the Trump supporter was actually talking about how that the economy was horrible, and my thing is. I would argue that the economy is just as bad under Trump as it is under Biden because they're cut from the same cloth. People like myself were catching hell, just like now we were catching hell from between 2016 and 2020. 
uh, we were still catching hell between 2008 and 2016. Especially we were still catching hell in my house from 2020. I'm sorry, from 2000 to 2008. So it does not matter. Because the thing is that things have been progressively getting worse, no matter the party that's in power. I feel like they, I feel like it's almost like a, a, a being a stenographer for the Democratic Party, and yet you call yourself the left. It just feels like a farce. It is. Um, essentially, um, if you do call yourself a Democrat and a very proud one, you are not left wing. And anybody who is in the left who is helping it, you're honestly just wasting your time. Um, one of the biggest things that we have people here definitely saying vote for Biden, vote for Biden is Project 2025. Now, as a trans woman, a trans Mexican woman, does that scare me? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I will not vote and show the Democratic Party that no matter what they do, they can allow Israel to commit a genocide, that they'll get my vote. They don't get that. If Project mm -hmm. 2025 is the result, then that's our fight to have. And we will do it together. And we will survive. But I will not show Biden and the Democrats that they can just do genocide, lie to us, and they get my vote every single time. Yeah. The, the, the kids aren't playing no more. The kids, mm -hmm. we're done. We're done with this. We, it took me two election cycles to become a Marxist. I'm surprised it took, I'm surprised not, it just didn't happen to people like who lived in the US their whole lives. It's yeah, insane. <laughs> absolutely. No, I, I, absolutely. Here's my thing. It's just like, for instance, for all the pink washing that they do and talking about, well, if you were in Gaza, then they will want to throw you off the top of a building. They will want to chop your head off, blah, blah, blah. They want to do it here. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. And one of my favorite things that I like to point to people is uh, is like, oh, crazy. They want to throw me off a roof. Oh, the people that with Palestinian flags want to throw me off the roof. They never say anything bad to me, especially in these discourses about it. You know who do? It is usually the Israeli flag calling me a man and a chick with a... So I... It's like, maybe that's just projection from your own views, my friend. Maybe you want to throw me off a roof and not... Hamas. Yeah, of course. And then and then on top of it, all the people, like for instance, Westboro Baptist Church, have does that ring a bell? Like, come on now. And there's even more hate churches. There's somebody that I watch on YouTube, uh, Dead Domain, who has infiltrated a um hate church that talked about trans people and eradicating them. Um and the the investigation that they did is insane. It's it's it, these churches are more popular than what most people think. Like they're out there, and it's not just yeah. Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, of course, there's a lot of them, and mm -hmm. so this is why we don't stand with genocide because we do not. We stand for the liberation of peoples everywhere, including Palestinians, because there's a lot of Palestinians out there. Not all Palestinians are Muslim, by the way, just in case no, and nobody told you. I'm talking to the audience, not you. Oh, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. Just in case nobody told you, not all Palestinians are Muslim. There are some atheist Palestinians. There are some Christian Palestinians. By the way, Israel bombed the church. And there are some Jewish Palestinians. How many synagogues in Palestine were destroyed? Okay. So... When it comes to that, and I don't want to get too stuff on, on, on the pink washing, but when it comes to actually advocating for the, the liberation of people, then we're going to stand with all people. It's just like the people of Uganda. Just because their government does some horrible anti-LGBTQ legislation doesn't mean I feel like the people of Uganda deserve to suffer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. And something to think to keep in mind, especially with the Uganda situation, Russia, uh, and even now America with Project 2025, um, most of the world is still pretty accepting of queer people um, and like the most accepting that we've ever been in the history. So you just got to keep that in mind. Like we're going to keep being more accepted. We just got to keep fighting. And like our predecessors before, we're going to do great. And we're going to make sure the kids after us are going to be taken care of. Yeah. We're actually, we're just going back to the way our indigenous people have been. You know, 
We're just mm -hmm. going back to, if you want to control, call yourself a traditionalist, then we'll call ourselves traditionalists in the indigenous sense. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Make America indigenous again. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> that, that's something that I always get thrown at me, too. They're like, oh, you're for decolonization. How about we do that to America? I'm like, ha, I actually want that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that, too. All right. Let's continue. Is it is headed in the right direction, but you're not going to find anybody who's willing to like celebrate. Yeah, I mean, how much would I have in another timeline without Gaza been talking about Sean Fain being there? Yeah, you're right. And yeah, the union point. wins and, and the call out, getting yeah, a pop call didn't, out, yeah. and yeah. you know all all of that. But it's just like, you know, I, it it is it is an incredible tragedy because you know before Gaza, I was out there saying, mm -hmm. listen, it's not just the lesser two evils vote. If you look just at antitrust and you right. look just at labor, and like, just at wages, like wages now are growing faster than prices, and they have been. Like if you for if you years, care about and, and especially the lower end, if you care about checking corporate power, yeah. the people he put in place in key you know positions have done a great job, and they've been aggressive, and it's been groundbreaking, and it's been a real break from the Clinton Obama. Democratic Party and obviously wildly better than, you know, Trump had a bunch of union busters in at the NLRB and the antitrust was not doing anything different than what was being done before. So those pieces are undoubtedly better under Biden. You know, I don't think that they've done a great job selling it or whatever. It's long term. While you have a lot of, of um, pain for people that is very present and very real right now. And on the economic front, you know, I've long said that dropping the, the economic pieces of build back better and allow all the COVID social safety net stuff to expire. I mean, that was a huge moral disaster. It was a huge political disaster. And it's a big and I think undersold part of why his economic approval ratings are so incredible, incredibly right. low. I just want to. One of the things that I always talk a lot of times people will say, well, we just have to get the messaging right. What, what is wrong with that? When they say, oh, we just have to get the messaging correct. Messaging for like left-wing movements? For No, for the economy. Basically oh, saying the economy. that. Yeah, when they say, oh, well, we just have to get the messaging correct. We just have to, we just have to advertise Joe Biden's wins, economic wins. What what would you say to somebody like Crystal Ball who says something like that? Um, your white supremacy is showing because there's people dying in Gaza. I'm like, I don't care. If Biden can give me health care for all right now. I don't care. To end the genocide. That is the biggest thing going on right now in the world. There is also the war in Ukraine. But the biggest thing is literally, uh, like Zelensky said, there was about three... I think this is a lie, but there was about 31,000 people that have died in Ukraine, I think, of like personnel. Isn't the, isn't the civilian casualties already 30,000 in Gaza and it hasn't been going on two years? It's good. It, the numbers are just going to show it's going to keep going up. So I don't care about the economic message. First of all, this sucks. Neoliberalism is failing. It's been failing since Reagan. I don't know why people, the only reason why it's existed so long is because the Soviet Union died. Neoliberalism in the economy works against the workers all the time. So it doesn't matter about any of these messagings for the wins because they're all just lies. Essentially, what they're saying is how can we deceive voters into voting for Biden in some pseudo good economy that we have? And again, it's just lying, lying, lying because the economy isn't good. And to then say, let's ignore all the bad. No, no. It's white supremacists to ignore the bad things. Just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it, it's a bad thing. It's a, it's a very bad thing. I've seen a child being carried by his dad in a bag. And the dad couldn't even cry. A and the child was not together. He couldn't even cry because he was so devastated and shocked that he lost everything. And how are we supposed to ignore that? I cannot vote for that. There's no messaging to be fixed and the genocide. Yeah. And even if that genocide weren't happening, let's say hypothetically, let's say hypothetically that the Palestinian resistance didn't make the move that they did on October 7th and that never happened. 
and we're focused primarily on just the economy. Just that alone is a losing situation for Joe Biden. It is just exacerbated by him funding a genocide. I'm going to share mm -hmm. this really quick mm -hmm. because, and then we'll finish up with what uh, Crystal and Ryan are saying. But I want to share this as well. Shout out to Gritty is the way on Twitter. I love the name. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at this. In 1983, making $30,000 a year is equivalent equivalent to making $164,000 a year in 2023 or 2024. Yes, that's right. In addition, the middle class isn't dying. The middle class is dead. In 1950, the average household was making $3,000. The average house cost $5,000. So it wasn't too hard. You about 2.5 times the price of your annual salary would be what you could do to afford a car and a house. Nowadays, people are making an average of $74,000 in household income and the average house is four hundred and fifty thousand dollars so in order to be considered middle class the bare minimum of middle class in america right now in 2024 you would be have to make a hundred and seventy four thousand dollars and that's meaning all of us are broke all y'all who are watching right now are broke. <laughs> yep yep not doing well we all have been broke this whole time in night yeah you know, and, and, and I said it, and people will look at me like I'm crazy for saying this. But if you're making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year, you're broke. I don't care what you <laughs> no, you broke. You broke, boo-boo. Mm -hmm. You ain't got it. Right? That master's degree ain't doing crap for you right now. Most of them I'm aren't sorry. even working in the degree that they went to school for. It's insane. Yeah. And so there are people who are literally going, I don't know how I'm supposed to survive. And it's not just a small subset of people, right? And I'm going to be sharing these videos to prove that it is worse than what people like Crystal Ball and Ryan Grimm are showing. Um, I'm going to share... Let me share this as well. All right. Let me share my screen here. All right. I'm going to tell you how f we are here in the United States of America. You know you're f in the United States of America when you can buy this little amount of food and it cost you what it just cost me. I bought a bottle of coconut water, two things of mangoes, two things of blackberries, two things of raspberries, a thing of blueberries, some seaweed, and some seeded grapes for $70. What's really sickening about that right there is that that is an extremely healthy diet and it cost me $70 here in the United States of America. For that same $70, you could fill that whole table up with toxic processed chemicals in bags, boxes, and cans. Welcome to the new America. Your thoughts? It's always gonna be an inevitability of capitalism that would end like this. But yes, this is also the new America, even though America was always destined to get here. Um, it's, I, I guess I always go back to always an anti-capitalist uh, stance uh, because it could be much better. Um, this is actually just sad to see. That was $70? Yep. They should have sold that. <laughs> he should have just ran off with it. Probably pay like a, if he got caught by the police, the ticket would probably be cheaper. Oh my God. Um, no, we're not okay. We're not okay. We haven't been okay for a long time. I don't know why. You know what the issue is? We do this stuff between like a four-year period. We're always going to the next election. What What is these four years? This, that, whatever. It's like, what about for the rest of our lives and the future of the kids? Like, uh, Reagan's policies, yeah, it got you a boat at the time and it got you a car, but it gets your kids a job that doesn't even match to their degree. Can't even pay them a living wage. 
and they have to rent to landlords these leeches that just keep raising the price up every year. It's mm-hmm. how can you how can people be so content with this? This is just it doesn't have to be like this at all. So no, I guess what I'm getting around to it is correct. the we need to stop working with the, the four year periods because the things that really brought liberation for the masses and got them their you know needs resources uh, I got them liberation was a strong communist party led by a vanguard party um, that really liberated mm-hmm. the masses that did not participate in bourgeois politics. Honestly, at this point, we're wasting our time within the bourgeois politic frame rate. How, how about we prove to our government that the people are done and we're actually going to start taking care of each other since you won't do it. We'll just stop paying your taxes. We'll just start funding our own communities. It's, it's like what we have to do. It's it's absolutely insane. Do we keep giving money to these criminals or do we actually start taking a stand? Do we keep voting for these criminals or do we tell them no? This is the when Biden was talking about the inflection point uh, with the Ukraine situation, Israel um, and the Thai, because he he also believes that China, China will make a move on Taiwan. I used to be against that, but the signs are kind of there that there's going to be um conflict between China, China, uh, Philippines, and the U.S., in my opinion. This is why the U.S. doesn't want to put forces in there. But he said we're at an inflection point, and we should ask that for ourselves, too. We're at an inflection point as the masses of the world in the United States. Are we really going to do the same thing over and over again, or are we going to try to make some change? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's, you know, people people are already broken we've been broken for a while it's just it feels like there are more people just realizing that the system has broken us um i want to share this as well i'm going to share the entire video because this is a long one but i just want people to get a semblance of what people are feeling now so let me share this as well i'm having a day or I'm having a life. I don't know, man. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm sitting outside work, crying my eyes out in my vehicle because I can't function anymore. I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I am. Um, I can't even literally keep gas in my car to get to work three days a week because I can't afford it. Like I get paid and it goes to car mortgage, a couple little bills. <laughs> And then be eight dollars in food for the week. And I literally only buy groceries on my daughter's home now. On the weeks that she goes with her dad, which is Monday to Monday, what I've started doing is I buy a loaf of rye bread and I work really hard to keep that one loaf of rye bread lasting me the whole week. And I eat peanut butter. So I'll eat peanut butter toast whenever I'm hungry. And it's been fine. It's been working just fine. That's all. I'm good with that. That's fine. Um, But last week, I guess I was a little extra hungry a couple days. So I had toast in the morning and toast in the evening, which that's not in my budget. So I ran out of bread on like the Thursday or even the Friday. I don't know. Either way, at 47, I had to see if my mother could buy me a loaf of bread so that can eat for the weekend before my daughter got home. But the economy is doing better. Cash in pockets is what we were told. This is something that also um, they try to get away with here in the United States is they give you like a wage like that, $34 an hour, and then say only three days a week you can work. This is how they also prevent you from getting benefits. Um, this is the state of the United States. This is, it's just a business. It's not even a country for the people. It's just, you know, the cyberpunk game, we're in that. 
Mm. We're gonna have trauma teams soon, where only yeah. the rich can pay for healthcare. Wait, oh, oh, actually, we're already in that. So, I had some more videos, but due to the sake of time, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to play them. But all the videos that I'm playing, I want you to notice something. Every single person that I'm playing is white. Meaning that if they're having it hard, what do you think the people who are constantly impoverished also do to our or our identity, which is also tied because I, you know, some people don't like this, but identity is also tied to class. All right. Just ask the young man who got suspended in te in Texas because of his hairstyle because he because it's a black hairstyle. Let's be real. So imagine how we're doing. Right? This is why last week when I had reparations activists on, we were talking about reparations, we talk about how socioeconomically those of us who are descendants of slaves here in this country we're not doing okay. So if they're having a hard time, if white people are having a hard time, how do you think the rest of us are? So I still yet, I still yet to see this booming economy. Yeah, and so that's one of the things that it, it just it feels like it's like don't pee on my head and tell me it's raining. Mm -hmm. You know? All right, let me get this over with. Expire. I mean, that was a huge moral disaster. It was a huge political disaster. And it's a big and I think undersold part of why his economic approval ratings are so incredible, incredibly right. low. I just want to mention Jeff Stein flagged some of the economic policy that was in the State of the Union, highlighting manufacturing, auto construction boom which is real, reducing drug costs by taking on big pharma. I mean, that was kind of like, they did a yeah. little bit there. Well, kind of uh, thing, but whatever. Two million yeah. new affordable homes, $5,000 per year for first-time home buyers, universal pre preschool, Pell Grants, cutting student debt, expanding ACA subsidies. So, I mean, some of those things are very neo-lib, but it is this kind of like populist economic focus. Chips that, that you talked about. Yeah, that would have given people something to focus on, hold on to, highlight, if not overshadowed by and the yet, forest he started. People, look, hang on. Mrs. M M Ms. Ball, you are basically saying that the only reason why people are upset with Joe Biden is because of the genocide going on in Gaza. What I would contend to you is saying that it is not only the genocide in Gaza, but it's the genocide in Gaza and the economy. Because what is one of the number one things that people say? People are saying that our money is going to Israel. Why are they so focused on the money? It's yeah. not necessarily because the principle of the money going there. It's because we don't have shit. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I talked about earlier today how my mom was at the grocery store trying to go shopping with our collective food stamps. And she didn't have enough to get everything, so she started to put some stuff back. And a generous lady came out of nowhere and paid for our cart, the carts full of food for us. What if that lady wasn't there? Some mm -hmm. food that we had got, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have right now because my food stamps and her food stamps don't cover it. So when people go, well, we just have to, it's just a messaging issue. No, that's why the title of this stream is 
Biden got 99 problems and Gaza is one. It's not but one. No, it is one. Re meaning that's a lot of aesthetic issues, not just Gaza. Yes, it is one of the primary issues. But even if you were to take a magic wand and bing, the genocide in Gaza wasn't happening, Biden would still be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, a a am I wrong, Valerie? You are not wrong. And also to add insult to injury, not only um, do we have not, we don't have money for the American people, or we do, we just don't give it to them. Uh, we're also building a harbor in Gaza um, to bring them aid because Israel doesn't allow food to come through their land corridors to Gaza. So now, instead of just telling Israel, no, uh, we are now trying to find another way to spend money that we don't have. Oh, that's where the money is for the infrastructure bill. It's to that goddamn harbor. It's not even, it was It was never for the United States. It was actually for that. Huh, okay, mm -hmm. I just figured that out. Um, you actually opened my eyes to more. Like I've known that the economy was an issue, but showing me those videos and your, your, your speech right there, I have been just parping in on Gaza more than anything. And it's actually a lot more than that. It's also him and his blatant racism with the Republicans for the border obsession. He's still building the Trump wall. I bet most people don't even know that. He is actually helping. Oh, and the money's going towards the wall. It's all coming to me. Yes. So, yeah, he does have 99 problems. And I would add three zeros after that, actually. He has 99,000 yeah. problems. Yeah. And let me share this as well, because there are some articles that ha these have been happening in the Biden years, if I can say whatever he wants, this is out of the Tampa Bay Times. How corporate investors are taking over Tampa Bay's neighborhoods. Experts say the outsized impact of just a handful of companies can squeeze individual buyers out of the housing market. And look, there that's what's going on here. Is that we literally are now unable to have wealth because these corporations are now buying up all the homes, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a piece at towards the end. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. So, and, and okay. It says since 2018, Companies have brought more homes in census tracts with median household incomes below county averages. They also purchased at a faster clip in majority black neighborhoods, which community residents say have further elevated the already inflated housing costs. So this is also them going after the most disenfranchised already and then buying up these houses and they're not going to sell these houses. The money is in renting them out instead of us actually being able to buy homes. So therefore, our ability to actually own a home is further taken away from us, not just Black people, but working people in general. Mm -hmm. Because we no longer have that wealth to be able to build up. Now, actually, keep right, going. Go ahead. No, no, keep going. I didn't mean to cut you off. So let me let me share this as well. Because that's from the Tampa Bay Times. Here's the Orlando Sentinel, right? The Orlando Sentinel. Investment firm snaps up homes in Orlando or Metro Orlando driving up prices. I live in Orlando. It says 10 home buying investors in 2021 in Metro Orlando were tied to firms in the single family rental house business leading the one expert to worry about the pressure of such deals putting on the real estate market. Says uh, an Orlando Sentinel review of data from the property appraiser for Orange, Osceola and Seminole County showed the growing trend of existing homes as opposed to new construction brought by single family rental companies. It happened during a year of bidding wars that drove medium prices through the roof and locked out individuals and families seeking to buy new homes. And so, and a lot of these are owned by companies like Blackstone, 
right? And so look at this. It says top 10 investors bought 3,496 homes. Known single family rental companies accounted for 3,330 sales, 12% of the total of 28,295 homes sold to investors. So they're buying up homes and then they're not letting them go because there's more money in doing the renting. And that's what they're trying to make money in. That's insane. It's like, uh, and, and these people, they'll see this go down and they'll lose their minds over state sanctioned apartments and housing for everybody. They're like, oh no, that's too much authoritarianism. I, I don't like that. Corporation houses, America. I like this. It, it's, it's depressing. I am, I'm so sorry that's happening in your area. And it's probably happening in mine too. I just don't, I don't know of these corporations that are buying stuff up, but I'll tell you what, the houses here are overpriced. For Iowa, damn. So yeah. we'll have Arisaka cars, Arisaka housing. Oh, it's going to be crazy. This yep. is sad. And then let me, yep, absolutely. Let me share this. Uh, this is also a lengthy article, but it says investors bought 26% of the country's most affordable homes in the fourth quarter, the highest share on record. This is This came out on Valentine's Day of last month. So when people talk about that we're losing wealth, this is happening. And it's not just Joe Biden. This is Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, George W. Bush. This is all their policies. Bill Clinton, H.W. Bush, this is just a culmination over the years. So when people are telling us, oh, well, things are getting better for us. No, they're not. That is manipulation to letting us think that, oh, well, one side is actually better than the other one, and that, in fact, it's not. And it's really, this is what I mean by gaslighting, where they tell you the economy is doing good, then you start doing self-reflection, and you're like, am, am I not good enough then? Do I not find the good jobs? Is this my issue? This is the issue with capitalism and individualism and a bourgeois democracy. They do this to make you feel bad and keep you down. And it's like, why, why should I do anything else? And so it's like a, they, they want you to feel abused so you abuse yourself within the system when the masses could literally liberate themselves from this bourgeois government. Yep. So... You know, and, and the thing is, it's like, and I understand a lot of us, we talk about these problems and my thing is, it's like, it's really more an appeal to somebody like a crystal ball or a Ryan Grimm to say, start talking to people like us that are working poor and poor on the ground because our numbers are growing rapidly. And so this is why many of us say no to both parties because they both do not care. And they will tout, oh, we're doing all these magnificent things. But in reality, like for instance, Joe Biden saying that he's trying to do all these things for the environment. Meanwhile, he's approving the Willow Project. It, 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 it doesn't square. You know, mm -hmm. do not give me a pile of doo-doo, put some sprinkles on it and call it chocolate ice cream. Stop serving me that. Oh, yeah. Because that's exactly what they're doing, you know? And mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, well, if it wasn't for the Gaza issue, no. It is, that's just one piece of it. You're saying, Oh, if it wasn't for that, then Joe Biden would be, you know, more popular. No. No. And this is why, why do you think 23% of black voters are now siding with Trump? And that's one of the 23%. saddest things I've seen. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, Here's it's, the crazy it's, part. I'm sorry. And, and you, no, you, you keep going. No, you keep like, going. Like, like, how many Latinos now are going, you know what? I think I'm going to side with Trump on this one. Too many. Latinos for Trump was a big thing, even with the last election. Now it is this one. It's, um, 
I also think it, it, he pulls at the uh, Catholic nationalism that was pushed on our people um, uh, due to Spanish imperialism. Um, and I think that really tugs on our uh, chords. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. Keep going. There was something I was going to say before, but keep going. Here's the real clear politics. So what they do is real clear politics is that they take an aggregate because, you know, polls can be skewed in one way or another. So it takes the average of the aggregate polls right now. Look, we all know how trash Trump is, right? Here, Trump is beating Biden by 1.8 points, 47.6% to 45.8%. Biden should be beating Trump into a pulp if he actually did what he actually promised that he would do when he was running. Mm -hmm. This should be a uh, open and shut case, but it's not. Um, it, like the people should be amped about not getting Trump back in with project 2025, but with how everything is, it's like, what are we, <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, you didn't even do anything last time. You actually made things worse. Um, yeah. but I also want to answer this, uh, Chat, it says people on $34 an hour don't blame the government that they can't manage financially. Uh, in that video, she says she only worked three days. This is what those companies like to do. They would give you these high wages and then only give you like two or three days and then you get amped about it. And then uh, they don't even give you the benefits. So you got to look at the material conditions of the, what the person is working because it's not like a four day a week, this, that, whatever. Like they are making $34 an hour, three days a week. And who knows, they might not even be working eight day weeks. They didn't specify that. It could be uh, seeing an, an hour like that is probably only like, like a four hour day or six hour day. I did one of these jobs for uh, Samsung. They were paying me $24 an hour and I only did 21 hours a week. So you just got to be thinking about that. Yeah. These companies are allowed to do that because of low government regulation, uh, regulation, um, especially when you don't have a people's state regulating these type of businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to answer that really quick. But yes, it should be easy for Biden. This should be an open and shut case. He was bad. Mm -hmm. Trump was not good. He started a war. He started a trade war with China and lost it. China wanted Trump to get in again, actually, with that second election cycle because they knew he would ruin the economy even more. But I guess, I guess it never, um, it doesn't even matter who won because Biden also brought that down. So I guess it doesn't matter who got into office. But uh, they were actually saying if Trump gets in the office, we will become number one by the time he's in there. So it's like they were, they were seeing that it was actually helping out their economy with that trade war. He failed it. Yeah. And then this is uh, Trump versus Biden versus Kennedy, West and Stein. So this is when you put the third parties together as well. Trump is still beating Biden, but he's beating him by a wider margin with the third parties taken in, in play. So if you look at this, Trump is at 41.1%, Biden's at 38.4%. RFK Jr. is at 12.7, Dr. Cornell West is at 2.6, and Dr. Jill Stein is at 1.7%. So the thing that I always, when I read this type of stuff, kind of rubs me the wrong way. is like these people know that Biden was an issue and Trump, and they still just flip flop between these two, especially our communities. I don't get this. I do not get this practice of, okay, so I voted for him this time and he was bad. So I'm going to go with the other one of the big parties. It's like they keep working against you. Why don't you just try to go for a Jill Stein or Cornell West, even though I'm mad at Cornell West? Uh, wait, what, what was it? Oh, yeah, he endorsed uh, Navalny. And I saw some of those videos of Navalny making fun of Muslim people. It's like, yeah, he was in a good opposition against Russia, but like, I don't think he was the guy. Um, yeah. I just had a thought. What was it? I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind over here. Uh, oh, and I, okay. So we do have some chat in here. And I do want to say uh, what I think is for this rise for Trump as well is kind of a um, subconscious thing because I think a lot more people are knowing or at least subconsciously knowing that we are about to go into a world war, in my opinion. Uh, we we know it. 
with, there's big conflicts. We got France even saying we're going to put special troops in Ukraine and also training their troops so for a high intensity combat situation with Russia itself. Not 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 saying to help Ukraine. It says high intensity combat with Russia. We are preparing for um, a massive war. And what usually comes before a war is mass economic failures, like throughout all of it, it just happens when you got bad economic situations people start getting desperate they start getting nationalistic they start getting well we, we could have a better time we could have a better country we could be great again and then they get trump in so i think they feel like trump would be a better uh, option to lead in a world war three situation which is absolutely insane in my opinion uh, i don't think biden would be good at all um but I think a lot of them are feeling that Trump would be better, especially for these coming wars, because uh, we're also going to go to war with China, I, I believe, here within this uh, decade. We will. This has been brewing for a very long time. And I think that's where the push for Trump's also coming from. They feel like he's going to be more coherent than Biden. And I'm not going to lie, both of them are scary to, to imagine them as leaders for this coming conflict. I don't know how this all this is going to play out. I know I've been prepping but it, it it terrifies me so i think that's where the trump push is coming from too something that doesn't get talked about too much yeah so in, in regards to that because a lot of times those of us who are on the left in this independent media space some of the things that we typically talk about are the problems what do you think is a viable solution for us on the ground who are divested away from the duopoly what different solutions do you think is possible for us to just, because there, there's so many of us that feel hopeless when we hear this, because it's like, yes, we, we, we know the problems we're able to, we're able to diagnose the issue, but what do you feel is a good solution for us Start easy. to help along our liberation? Start easy. Uh, leftists, anybody in the left sphere, uh, we like to be socialists. What's the main word in that? Social. Look for groups, liberation groups near you. There are a lot of them. There's, uh, we have a Des Moines Black Liberation Group here. I want to get in contact with them and talk with them a little bit more. Um, they were talking about um, even like two years ago when Roe v. Wade was taken out, they were saying we need to stop voting. We, what we need to do is come together and actually do direct action to prevent from this from happening because the government doesn't help you anymore. So I would say find revolutionary groups. I would say find groups that you know are more of the left-wing sphere and ask hard questions when you have conversations, when you talk to them, uh, when you um, participate in like uh, mutual aid. Start having some hard questions of where where could we take this that helps the people of our community and how can we connect with other communities in different states to build a network and a connection um, that inevitably shows the United States government that we are starting to become strong without them. And that doesn't mean we have to fight the U.S. government. That doesn't mean we have to get airplanes to fly into them. We're just standing strong without you. That's what we have to build towards. And it's going to be very hard. I, I know it sounds silly, but like actually getting out and having conversations with people is hard, especially in this isolationist individualist like economy, country that we live in, how the cities are built. There's no trains that could take you to another one. You have to have cars to go anywhere. I would say try to find online spaces that have ground uh, groups here in uh, your cities near yourself and try to see how you can help. And while also helping be respectful, but also ask hard questions on how we can further these movements and groups to come together and really make a stand together. So what are your thoughts about, uh, because uh, I, there's a comrade that talks about uh, pushing for ballot initiatives. He says to circumvent the politicians, push for citizen ballot initiatives. This could be a way to at least mitigate some of the damage to the working class. What are your thoughts on that? I'm not sure what that's about. That's actually a phrase I first heard. Could you explain it a little bit more? What would that well, be? Well, citizen ballot initiative. Entail? Well, citizen ballot initiatives, like for instance, uh, there's going to be a ballot initiative uh, here in Florida to fully legalize cannabis here. So instead of going through the legislator or going through Congress, uh, state Congress, or going through the governor, 
is actually going to be done through ballot initiative process where all the voters on voting day on November 2nd, we actually vote either yes or no on the ballot in order to be able to have cannabis that's legalized within the state of Florida. It's similar to how we did. Oh. We, actually, we actually passed $15 minimum wage here in Florida, despite it being a red state. Dude. So we did that by the people actually voting for it. Yeah, and so that's cool. Passed. Yeah, I, I so, support that 100%. Okay. Like, if it's initiatives it's like that, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, d do that. Like, if that just takes a little time out of your day and actually gets some of that stuff passed, cool. If your vote is for, like, a politician who says they will bring that about, no, don't do that. But those initiatives, I like that. That is actually – because I like hearing direct votes from the people. Honestly, with the, how this exists, we should not have any excuse to even have – um, the electoral college anymore. We have the capability of doing direct voting from the from this. And honestly, this would be a lot more secure than like just normal vote, vote, voting ballots. There's a lot of encryption that go into these things. Um, but those like direct uh, civil like votes, uh, we don't really get much of those around here in Iowa. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would participate in it, especially for cannabis. All we have here is we can have Delta Nine gummies, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> It, it works. It just tastes like it tastes bad. <laughs> it doesn't taste good. I've had those before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not attracted to the earthiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I like that. Um, if we had more initiatives like that over here, um, I would like. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd participate in that. I think that's good. Cool. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.